Hi, I'm Terry Danis, and I am Paul's wife, uh, co-founder of Live It, and I want to take a few minutes to share with you how Live It got started. Sorry I can't be with you in person, I'd rather do this in person, but um, today I'm going to get to do it on video. Uh, but in 2010, Paul and I were on staff at a local church, and God used us um, there to work with folks that were in need. They would come to events that we were having to give away clothes to kids going back to school, backpacks and things like that. Um, and also at Christmas we were giving away bicycles and, and coats and, and uh, toys. And as we were working through these events, we noticed that some of the same people kept coming back and coming back. And, and Paul was burdened in his heart, he said by the Lord, um, to tell the folks that we were helping that they had a gift and a talent and that they should come back and help us uh, maybe at the next event or the next day giveaway so they could experience the joy of giving. Um, it didn't work out for us to be able to do it there uh, when we were at the church, but from that God birthed in Paul's heart the desire to go out to the community and teach folks that they have a gift and talent and that it, they can use it to further God's, God's kingdom. And so 2010, January 7th, we resigned and on faith started what we call Live It. And God named it um, Live It, Taking the Bible Out of the Box. So we wanted people to get outside themselves. We wanted the church to get outside the walls, go out in the community, meet folks that are in need. We left the church and uh, took a little trip down to a friend of ours in Florida that had started a church. And on the way down there, we prayed, God, we want to live it everywhere we go. And if that means taking a homeless person to, to lunch, whatever, whatever. And that's exactly what we prayed. We were down there for about three days and we didn't find anybody. Uh, we were trying to help God out, drive around, look for somebody that needed help, didn't work out. And so the last day we're there, we go to our friend's church and uh, as we were leaving, there was a man that we, I ran into as I was running back into the church to change my clothes to drive back home from Florida. I was going to put on my comfortable clothes and he came up to me and started talking. I didn't understand him at first and then when I did I said I don't live here. I don't know the answer and so um, there was just something odd about him and as I went back in to change my clothes I thought is this the man? Maybe this, this guy looks like he might be homeless. Is this the man maybe God wants us to take to lunch? So I went back out to the car and talked to Paul about it and we prayed right there in the parking lot. God if this is the man that you want us to take to lunch and tell that, that uh, he's got a gift and talent, that he can live it, then you have him come talk to us. So I went on in and changed my clothes. I come back out and sure enough, Paul was standing there talking to him. Come to find out he was homeless and we took him to lunch. We found out he was a 63 year old man living behind a Kmart under a tarp. He had been a truck driver his entire life and he had a massive heart attack. And when he had the massive heart attack, the doctors told him he was living on bald time. They, they did surgery. He took his shirt off and showed us this big old scar down his front and said uh, they couldn't do anything else for him. It had been three years since he had had that. And all this time he had been living under that tarp behind the Kmart. And we told him, we said, Gary, his name was Gary. He said, Gary, you know, you have a gift and talent that you should use to help someone. And he laughed and said, well, I don't know about that. And so Paul encouraged him to, to attend that church that night. We got in our car, we left, we came back home and we told Gary, you know, stay in touch with us. Paul gave him a little business card with his number on it. We didn't even make it home that night and Gary called, let us know he did attend that church that night. And they'd given him a Bible and a t-shirt and Paul encouraged him. He said, well now, Gary, you have a gift and talent. We want you to go out and we want you to help somebody and don't ask for anything in return, and God's gonna bless you, because the Word of God says it's a greater blessing to give than to receive. Well, the next day, Gary called us late that afternoon, he talked to Paul, and he said, well, I went over to that church, Paul, Brother Paul, and he said, I went in there, and they're remodeling, and I, I helped them. And Paul said, that's good, Gary, now just go in there, and if that's what you wanna do, you go in there and help them, and don't ask for anything. And uh, so every day in the afternoon late, Gary would call Paul. And he would say, I went to the church and I helped him paint. Or I went to the church and I hauled off some lumber. And Paul would encourage him. And, and it was about the fourth to fifth day he called and he said, Paul, you're not going to believe this. He said, but somebody gave me a tent. He said, my clothes aren't going to get wet anymore under that tarp when it rains. 
And Paul said, Gary, I told you God wants to bless you. He said, uh, he said, just keep, don't ask for nothing. So anyway, every day he would call. The sixth day, I think he called and said, somebody giving him a haircut. And Paul kept encouraging me. Finally, he, he kind of, Paul kind of got questioning, were, were they paying this guy to come and show up every day? Why would he do this? All we told him to do was to go do it. And he did it. And so he called the pastor down there, and Pastor Darrell said, no, um, we're not paying him. He shows up every day, and, and he just does whatever. We gave him a Bible. He sits over and reads his Bible if we don't have anything for him to do. So the 11th day, he called, and it, it really choked Paul and I up when we heard him. There was a lot of noise in the background, and, and Paul said, Gary, what's going on? There's so much noise. And, and Gary said, he said, I'm at a ball game. You know, this church has a ball team, and we're here. And he said, Paul, I just want to tell you, I got me a family. And that's when it really started to sink in. You know, that's what Gary needed. He needed somebody cared about him. So the 14th day, this was a big deal. Paul got a call. He got a call every day. But this particular day, he said, Paul, he said, I'm going to give my tent away to a homeless person. And Paul said, well, Gary, I hate to tell you this, but you are homeless. And he said, not anymore. He said, a woman heard about me here in the church, and she has uh, got a three-bedroom, two-bath condo on the beach she wants me to move into. Well, Paul and I could not believe that. We're like, what? So we actually took another trip down there with a couple other people, drove down there, and, and started talking to the people in the church and said, what do you mean that this woman did this? And the pastor shared with us, he said, I want to tell you what, he said, this guy's changed our lives here at this church. He said he comes in here every day giving of himself, not asking for anything. And uh, he said we'd kind of gotten our hard, hearts hardened a little bit about homeless people. They come in here all the time asking for something. They get mad if we don't give them what they want. And they urinate on the side of the building and all kinds of things like that. And we just, we'd just we gotten a hardened heart. And God's showing us through Gary that we had gotten a hardened heart. We talked to the men's pastor, and they had become really, really good friends, Gary and he, and he started a blog about Gary. He called it My Friend Gary. And so we found out that, that God had used Gary not only to uh, show Paul and I that, yes, live it was something that was going to work. We could tell people to give themselves, and they would do it, and he would bless them. But it also changed the lives of this church and the people in it, the lady that gave him the place to live. We, we met her and she shared with us that she had had a hardened heart towards men and God was doing a work in her heart and just so many things that were just unbelievable. A couple months later, Gary decided, he called and told us that he was going to come to Sevierville and be with us and do live it up here. And he did. He got a bus ticket on his way up here. He led a woman to the Lord. Um, he got here in town and he uh, was on the phone one night and we didn't know who he was talking with. We both heard him say, all you got to do is pray this prayer. And he led somebody to the Lord afterwards. And uh, we asked him after he got off the phone, Lord, Gary, was, were you leading somebody to the Lord? He said, yeah, it's my daughter. We've been estranged for many years. He said, she lives over in West Virginia. I just led her to the Lord. Just a few weeks later, he shared with us that he was going to go back to West Virginia and be with his daughter. And uh, he was going to leave it over there. So after doing several projects with us here, he left. He went back to West Virginia to be with his daughter. That was in the fall of 2010. And December, we found out that Gary passed away. And uh, our thought is, is that Gary finished well. That was a uh, confirmation to Paul and I that we were doing what God had called us to do. And from there, it has grown to where um, we now get people in the community to use their gifts and talents asking for nothing in return and expecting God to bless them. And that's, that's how we got started. <laughs>